All right, so we're gonna try something very brave here because I am at the yarn shop and I'm hanging out, spinning art yarn. And I thought I would do a little live video. I am live, so the phone, <laughs> the phone may ring or somebody could come in but right now I'm sitting here listening to the Beatles spinning so I'm spinning on the Magic Craft Aura which I have hooked up to the really cool overhead bobbin I don't know how you guys can see how big this bobbin is it's huge and I'm spinning a kind of a combo yarn I've got mohair which is what I'm spinning in now and what I'm doing with this is I'm just pulling it apart and letting it kind of play to whatever it's like, whatever it wants to do, and letting it be kind of a own happy thing. And then, and I do that for about the count of 10 or until I get about 18 inches of yarn. And then I'm reaching over and grabbing some Angora. Which I'm actually going to get more of. And putting that on. Hi, Shelly. I actually turned it around this time so I can see when people join. It's kind of cool. I only took me, I don't know how many videos. So with the Angora, this is the Angora that had maybe some webbing, some mats. Um, it isn't prime. And it's a mixture from my grooming. And I let it, a thin piece go through and then I let a thick piece go through. Thicker piece. And I don't have to put a lot of twist in this. People think you have to twist the Angora really well. If you have your settings correct, which this is set on actually the slowest speed it will go. Because I want it to be kind of all funky. Um, it'll still join. You don't have to have nearly as much twist in yarn as you think. If you look at a commercial yarn, you will see that there's not a lot of twist in those yarns. There's a lot, a lot of, you can actually pull them apart. All of our hand spun yarn is much easier to, or much higher twisted, highly twisted than that. Obviously, I've forgotten how to talk. So then I think of this is part of a bat that I bought from a, I think I bought this from Lucky Rose Fiber Arts. Um, in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Um, and again, I'm letting a thick piece go through. I'll let it slide down to a thinner piece, a thick piece, and then finally, when I'm about halfway through this piece, so I'm making this a little bit longer. This is about three feet. I reach over, and I got these really cool locks. And I'll put these in the middle of one of the thick pieces, and then I'm going to hold it back. I'm going to speed up my trundling a little bit. I'm going to let it, the twist build up and it spins that, that lock into there. And then I go back to my thick, thin, thick, thin for a while until it actually settles down and then I just repeat and the thing to remember about doing any art yarn is there's no rules um, if you are having fun any yarn there's no rules as long as you are having fun that's all that matters and you cannot I will say you can't do this okay you can do this on any wheel um, there's a lot of wheels that it's better not do this on. The, if you can't fit it through the orifice, um, you're going to have problems. This wheel is really made for art yarn. It was developed by an art yarn spinner. Um, but normally I spin on my rose. My rose is at home because I really need to learn how to use this wheel thoroughly. So if I keep my rose here, I won't use it now that it's at home. And 
I've got the big bobbin on this, then I get to play with the yard guard. And this bunny clearly got into its hay. So with the bat, I'm just pulling off the big sections. It's all cool. Then I can go. Everybody's kind of spinning chili. You can do it. And this is like makes like the coolest yarn ever, and everybody always wants this yarn when they see it. And it makes all those people who don't spin like this go, well, that's not really well done yarn, but it's yarn. And that's all that matters. And it's supposed to be fun. People use it in weaving a lot. Um, I think most of what I sell when I sell this kind is to weavers. Um, but it makes really cool, like, cowls and stuff. This would make, actually, if I get enough yardage, this would make, like, the most awesome, weird shawl with the few little long hanks hanging and all that stuff. Just have to use your imagination. I just keep going and going and going. And if you notice, when I heat my hands, I keep my hands pretty slow. I'm treadling really slow. Um, and, you know, if you count when you treadle, when you first start spinning, you'll get a lot better at it. Or if you put on music that has a real rhythm. Um, slower treadling is always better than fast treadling. We all tend to go off to the races when we treadle. And then our hands have to keep up. And for rabbit breeders, this is a great use of the Angora that we don't want to sell. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And it opens up a whole world that you don't have to have perfect Angora. I have tried selling the Angora for this, though, and people look at me like I'm really crazy, but then they'll buy the yarn. So, go figure. And it's snowing here today at the beach. So it's not supposed to snow at the beach. It's not really accumulating, but it's definitely snowing, which is kind of funny. It wasn't snowing enough for me to say, oh, I can't go into the shop. It's just snowing just enough to make it like little white flakes everywhere. But Portland is like, it has snow everywhere and everything's shut down and they're requiring chains to drive through the city. <laughs> so our winter weather continues on and on and on, which is not necessarily a good thing if we're all ready for spring but then again spring comes rain so mohair I bought from up in Washington. I bought a whole bag of it. I just love it. Um, I've got more coming too. I've got a whole bunch of um, border luster locks that are coming from a rabbit breeder friend of mine. She died and they all these fun colors. I loved the locks for years and years and years. I didn't spin with locks and then I started spinning them and now I'm like an addicted to them. And I can't stop. I need to have somebody over dial the Pygora locks I bought it off. They're these really cool gray, super pretty locks.
you get kind of a rhythm with it after a little while. You get so that you can just kind of do it without thinking. And I count, I leave a lot of spaces, otherwise I, I go back down to spinning thin if I don't actually make myself count with this. Um, so like I'll go one, two, three, four, six piece, two, three, four, six piece. Otherwise, I get all sorts of tiny. And that's not the point. The point is to make it all crazy. With this, I just pull it apart as I go. And the more I leave it together, the funkier it'll be. If I pull it apart, it'll make it like a cloud. I sat across from a lady for days spinning this um, at a fiber festival, and I was like, oh my gosh. It looked like so much more fun than I had spinning my, my thin yarn that I had taken all weekend to spin. And that was what kind of started this craze for me. like with the Angora, I was like, oh, there's got to be a way to make Angora yarn that's unique and fun. I really like this Aura spinning wheel. I didn't like it. It's a double drive wheel and it's got a different feel to it than the other Modricross. But now that I'm using it for its intended purpose, I absolutely love it. Like, I want to keep it which, I mean, I have one for in the shop, so I kind of have one, but it's not technically mine. And I might have to change that and make one that's actually technically mine at some point. Because then somebody comes in and they want to buy it, and I, have, and I have to sell it to them, and it makes me all traumatized because, you know, they're buying my wheel and all that. We have these pictures in my house that an artist, when they, when we bought them, she was all like, you're buying those? Those are my favorite pictures. I can't believe you're buying those. And, um, and I was like, well, we love them. And she's, she goes, but those are my favorite ones. Are they going to a good home? And they were going to a good home. We still have them hanging in our house, which looks a lot like one of the houses in the picture. But wheels are kind of the same way for me. I get that. Actually, some of the yarn is. Though I don't, I'm not like Danielle. Danielle wants me to have people fill out adoption forms when they come in to buy her yarn. Because she really just uses the shop as a storage spot. And then every once in a while I sell one. She's like, well, who did it go to? But that's part of the fun is seeing what other people imagine with your work too. Because this, to me, this is the, this is like the highlight is getting to spin and make something crazy and artsy. I'm gonna get you close so you can see this. Oops. Ooh, this is weird. There we go. So now you can see what's going on here. So. All right. Put you back over there. Let's see. It's hard for me to see. It's like weird. Okay. I need a better phone. I like the fact, too, this is bobbin is like a three-pound bobbin, so I can keep going and going and going. I think they said it's like a, I can't remember, they say it in a really cute New Zealand accent how many, how much this holds. 
and it's like Truk Islands or something like that. It's, it's a funny way of, of measuring how much it goes. goes through. And tomorrow night we're doing our first spin knit all the things night for our new um, spinning guild and our new knitting group. We're going to just kind of hang them, have them hang out together for a while um, and then break off if we need to. And that's from 6 to 8 at the yarn shop. So we'll be hanging out. We'll probably have some wine, some cheese and crackers, and have some fun and relax towards the weekend. We haven't decided on an official name for it. I'm calling it the Sea Spinners, but I have also. I put it up, advertised as the Twisted Spinsters because I still think that's funnier. We might have to have an online poll to decide. But I really want a Twisted Spinster shirt because that would be, like, so awesome. And really fun. I was just uh, separating that lock a little bit more. Oops drop it all over. I make a big mess when I spin. Like, my whole house is covered. And the shop. I don't believe in neat and tidy artsy crafts things. I kind of, when I use these locks, let's see if I can get it going here, I kind of tuck one in like that and then spin it into it. And I'll show you here, I'm going to end this video before my phone dies, but um, I'll show you. Some yarn I spun the other day. Yarn here. Here. Um, this is the shop. Ooh. I'm not going to show you the Christmas tree that's still up because I'm procrastinating. Let's see here. So this is one that I finished like this on Sunday. So that's what that will look like when it's all done. 